Hey folks, so I have finally cleaned my desk in my workspace and it's it's wonderful, it's nice. But anyway, here we go. Let's again, go ahead and get back, back to where we were. Let's go ahead and talk about my Game Boy Advance SP battery mod. So most of you have seen, or at least heard of, um, this battery mod that I've been, that I worked on quite a while ago. Uh, the idea behind it was it was a an extremely cheap, extremely easy, high capacity battery for the SP, so that we don't have to use these uh, cheap garbage aftermarket cells that don't quite have the capacity that they uh, claim to have. This is not 850. This battery tested at 383. So. This intends to replace this. Uh, it's significantly cheaper, it's significantly easier. The only downside is it, it's not quite standard. Um, so like these batteries, it's pretty easy. You know, you just pop it in, Bob Jaunty. These things though, I designed it so that the PCB would be slightly oversized and then you just wedge it in there. Um, I have been made aware of a few problems such that if you accidentally shave this PCB down too small, it doesn't actually wedge in there and make good contact. Um, now, in this case, it's good enough. I'm just holding the cell in with my finger. You can see the SP is on. Um, but you can see it, it's, it's not making good contact. If I wedge it in there, it just doesn't stay. Um, other SPs, notably OEM consoles, do have much tighter tolerances and so it's easier to wedge these in but if you aren't ordering these PCBs from Osh Park like if you're ordering them from a vendor that um, that had these PCBs made in bulk chances are they're already going to be slightly undersized and unfortunately that's just the way things are um, but it's been the case usually that you can just jam it in there uh, throw the battery cover on and then, like I said, Bob Jaunty, but in this case it didn't even work, so anyway, working on that, promise. Uh, there is also another issue with batteries from different vendors, like here, my original battery mod I tested with these batteries from the CL vendor. Um, one of the battery mods that I, or one of the vendors that I recommend is actually shipping batteries from HHS. I have no idea what these abbreviations are, but there are differences uh, within tolerances per battery. This HHS battery, 5.75 millimeters. The original CL batteries that I tested with, 5.82 millimeters. So you can see they're a little bit thicker. Uh, I have had some people report that the battery cover just bulges ever so slightly, and yeah, that can be the case, you can see it's perfectly flush in here, but if we install one of these, don't really want to jam that in, but there we go. You can see, it's still nice and flush, but let's take, is it this one? I don't know, I think it's this one. this one from HHS and we hold the battery cover flush you can see it's sticking up just a hair on this side and a little bit more on this side now you can just push that down and it's probably fine because if it's sticking up on this side it's most likely this PCB here um, but in some cases it is the battery itself now these batteries, the tolerances are just super tight. So if it has this capped on tape on the sides, I recommend removing it like I did with this one. Um, the battery itself, you just peel the tape off. It's not gonna hurt anything. And that will help with some of the tolerance issues. This tape is not thick, but don't forget there are two layers, on, one on top, one on bottom, and that will affect the clearance. But, let's 
Let's try it out now. So, still sticking up a little because of this PCB, but I can shave that down a little. I'm sure it'll be fine. But on this side now, it's perfectly flush. So anyway, let's talk about what I actually came here to talk about. Um, instead of just getting distracted talking about previous versions of this battery mod. There is a new version of this battery mod coming out that is actually being sold. Um, I'm not selling it. I'm making zero money off of this, but we got retro modding. All right, they are stocking this battery mod and this is a pre-production version. Um, there will be some changes within the final version, but I just wanted to go over what you get and um, I will probably end up posting the files to make some of this. Uh, this is retro modding's bracket design, so I'm not hosting that. If they choose to share it, then by all means, go ahead and get yourself one. But if not, then all you'll have is the PCB, and it won't be any functionally different than the older versions. But, but, uh, did want to check this out and I guess show off the operation. I don't know how much of this is going to. <clears throat> I don't know how much of this is going to be relevant. I guess. Um, I don't know if the final version is coming assembled or what. I'm assuming the battery you get with Retro Modding's kit is at least going to have a battery connector on it uh, instead of having to solder this right to the right to the PCB. But let me pop this PCB off here. That is still an option there. There are still those battery tabs, but you might notice there's also a connector here. That goes right there, and then you can pop the battery connector on. Um, so, let's take a look here. I've got an even older version of the, an even older pre-production version of this that, as you can see, I never quite tested like I was supposed to. But, just in case, I do have an extra connector. And this one did come with the battery connector, so we will, we will be attaching that to one of my batteries here. So we can, uh, we can give it the full test. But anyway, the most important part we are going to need to add this battery connector on here. And I have already made changes to the PCB version that Retro Modding is going to be shipping. So this will be significantly easier to hand solder on the final versions. Uh, I paid no attention to this when I was designing the PCB because, quite frankly, I, I thought they were going to have them assembled by a machine, and a machine doesn't care how easy these are to hand solder. Uh, but also, I just, quite frankly, didn't even think about it. But anyway, this connector is going to go right there. Let's see if we can't get that soldered. Oh no, I didn't think about this. I'm going to untangle my iron. I was cleaning my desk and I rearranged things. Anyway. Start off, gonna tune my iron here. And I'm going to tin both of these connectors, maybe. This is probably part of the issue. There we go, there's one. And there's the other. So if they offer this pre-assembled, highly recommend that. That is not, those are not easy joints to make. Oh, this isn't even, you can't even see. I'm sorry, guys. Tilt that up just a little. These front pads are not strictly necessary, but they will help you from ripping the connector off the board accidentally if you need to detach the battery. There we go. I 
normally you want to heat the joint and then feed solder into it, but there's actually not enough room for both the tip and solder, so I see what they mean when they said this was difficult to hand solder. And yes, like I said, I have made the, uh, the boards that they will be ordering. Those are slightly modified with bigger pads for easier hand soldering. Just cannot get this last joint. Oh, there it goes. All right. And so that, I believe, would be as much as you would have to assemble. Then you have to get one of these brackets 3D printed. Um, I did have my hand at uh, printing it myself, but my printer is not quite as dialed in as theirs. Um, but this just goes in there. These There's these two notches on the bottom get lined up, and the battery connector goes towards the inside. And doesn't quite fit as easily as one might hope, but there's room for improvement. And like I said, this is pre-production, so we can we can excuse some of the bugs. Alright, so yeah, it, it's not quite fitting right in my bracket, but we'll just use the one it came with. fits nicely just like that. And then just pop this in here. Boom! And look at that. This 3D printed bracket will hold it in place nicely and everything is nice and flush so you don't need uh, to worry about bulging. It's down nicely. Alright. But let's actually get this thing working. Let's get a battery installed in here. Let's check it out. So, like I said, I am fairly confident that their batteries are coming with the connectors already attached. Uh, if not, if you want to get your own connectors DIY, um, I will throw a link at least to this version if they get their brackets, if they share their brackets publicly, I'll throw a link to this version so you can use the one with the brackets, but otherwise this is the identical thing. Um, but I'll also throw links to these ACHR connectors because they're nice and low profile. I don't have this PCB labeled, but this top connector should be negative and this bottom connector should be positive. So remember, negative is black, positive is uh, red, because we got to solder this on to this battery. I'm going to use this one, just because the tape's already coming off, because we're going to do this as clean as possible. I'm going to remove all this tape. Remember, you only desolder one connector at a time. This is a live battery. Molten solder is still conductive. Right. And cut this short. It's going to end up going like that. We really do not need a lot of wire, do we? All right. Oh no, my flush cutters. I tried cutting something with my flush cutters last night that I should not have cut with my flush cutters. Totally ruined them. 
Okay. Oh, I should probably strip more than that. I'm soldering to... Terminals, after all. So this bottom one is positive, so I need to solder it like this. What I'm doing will make more sense in a second. We'll get there. I'm just going to spin this around so it's easier for me to solder to. A board holder or something would help significantly. But I'm clearly well beyond help. Ooh, let's also not short that. That was dangerous. went well, we should have voltage on the red one, bottom one, black one, top one, should have whatever battery voltage this is. And we don't. I broke something. Either the connector's just not fully seated, or one of the solder joints, or several of the solder joints are bad. I'm gonna go with uh, bad solder joints. <laughs> okay. But at least I have that right. Let's try that soldering one more time. Absolutely disconnect your battery while doing this. That should go without saying, but apparently it doesn't. Should be good now. So let's get this finished up. 
Instead of reusing the old tape, this is just captain tape. It's nothing special. Get some more. Get some fresh. Go around like that. Pull this battery connector through because I always forget about that step. Fold this down. Where it was before, and then just need a little bit more tape. It'll be like we never even took it apart, even though I don't have the right size tape for this. We'll just pretend. We'll also ignore that cat hair that just floated in. So yeah, there we go, that should be it. Let's go ahead and get disassembled. Oh, there we go. This battery is supposed to fit in this frame, but I think we need to insert the battery first. Fitment issues I'm having right now are because of my tape. On a pre-assembled battery, it should be fine. Just tuck that in there. There, just like that. It's nice and snug. This is my first time trying this out with an actual battery in there. Look at that. Nice and flush. Both sides. There's no screw on this battery cover, so I can't screw down the clear one. But look at that. Doesn't come out. Unless you remove it. Notably, unlike some other recent batteries, <coughs> you can actually remove it. Should work on that coffin. All right. I'm so stoked, man. I'm so stoked. And look at that, works a treat.
So I'm not going to bother doing any uh, uh, capacity testing on this because it's the it's literally the exact same battery cell that I just pulled from another one of my previous mods. So I'm not going to get any different results. The only difference with this new kit is how it's assembled and how it sits within the console itself. Electrically, it is the exact same thing. Um, but otherwise, I'm... I'm really happy with it. I'm very pleased with what they've done, uh, with what they helped me do as well. And yeah, this is, this is awesome. I, the battery mod, they haven't even teased it yet as of today, August 23rd. I have no idea when this video is going up, probably, probably before September. By then they will probably teased it, but I don't think it's going to be up on their store for at least another two weeks or so. Um, but as soon as I have a link, I will throw a link down in the description. Uh, I will also throw a link down to my GitHub where I have all these different PCB versions. Um, right now, I only have this one hosted, but I will probably add this one without the retromodding logo, because if you buy it from retromodding, you get their logo. If not, then it doesn't make sense to have it. But um, I'll add this newer version with the battery connector, and like I said, if they share the 3D printable bracket, I'll share that version too. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Happy, uh, happy playing. Enjoy your generous long run times. Thanks for watching.